Welcome to episode 15, my name is James and in this episode we're building the user interface during gameplay. We're building the user interface inside the play scene file and we can scroll straight down to the create UI method. At the end of our last episode we created the top bar using the phaser 3 graphics object and we're going to do the same thing for the bottom menu bar. To avoid duplicate code, I'm adding a new method called createUIBar and all it does is it creates this background graphics object for us and we can just define the x and y coordinates and place it wherever we want. Something peculiar about Phaser 3 is that graphics objects, they don't have a center coordinate. For all the other objects in Phaser 3, you can always access the center x and center y coordinates, but that doesn't work for graphics objects for some reason. So that's why I'm adding this custom data and I'm just saving the center x and center y coordinates like this. Now back in our create UI method, we can delete the code from last episode and make use of our new method to create these background bars at the top and at the bottom. We reload the game for a quick check and we can see the top and bottom bars are exactly how we want them to be. Next we want to create the pause button and the heart icons. So I'm adding these two image files to the assets folder and then we need to load them into the game from inside the preload scene. We've already talked in much more detail in episode 4 or 5 about how you can load assets into your phaser game. Here you see me use the exact same code, I'll use the phaser loader and we just load these new images into the game as you already learned it. Now that we have these image files available, we can go back into our play scene and we start out by adding the pause button. We have to do this for each UI element, we have to set the scroll factor to zero and we have to make sure it has a depth value that puts it on top of all the other elements. In a future episode we will build the pause screen, but for now we'll just have an empty placeholder callback method for the click pause function. Now we can add the icons for the player hearts, which represent the current player health. We define a start x and y coordinate and we have a step value which represents the distance between each heart. And since these hearts represent the player's total health, we have to loop through the player's total health and for each health point we create a heart icon. And finally we save all these heart icons in the hearts array. Something we haven't done yet is define the player's total health. So we go into the player prefab and we want to be using a setter method to set his current and total health. The setter method itself will create it in the entity prefab file because we want to have this method available also for the other entities such as monsters. The set health method takes two arguments, the current health and the total health. The total health is an optional argument so we check if it is actually provided, if it is we will set the new total health to this value and then finally we can set the new current health always making sure that the current health is not more than the total health. I want to reload the game to make sure that the hearts are looking properly but then there is an error and I realized that I'm using the button prefab to create the pause button but actually we haven't even looked at the button prefab yet. We will look at the button prefab in a future episode, hopefully in the next episode and for now we're simply replacing it with a normal phaser 3 sprite. And refreshing the browser window now shows us the button image in the top uh, left corner and we have the three hearts in the top UI bar. And for the score text which represents the distance that the player has been running currently, we put that in the middle of the bottom UI bar and this is where we can use this um, data that we saved as the center Y point on this UI bar. Finally we use the score style string for our score text and let's quickly jump into our text prefab and check if we have this 
score styling defined and actually we haven't so let's make sure we have a custom styling for our score text on the ui for now we're just setting it to a font size of 32. even though it's not much it's still good to have this custom styling because maybe in the future we want to change that naturally the user interface is not a static thing we need to update it and show the player the current status of his game so we need to create this update ui method and we will use it to update the score that the player uh, is currently at and also to show how many health points the player currently has for the heart icons i have two frames the frame zero shows a full heart and the frame one shows an empty heart empty hearts represent lost health points so what we do is we loop through the hearts array and we check if this index if this um, counter of the heart is below or equal to the player's current health then we use the full uh, heart icon and else we use an empty heart icon now we scroll to the update method and we save the game score as the current as the player's current position on the level grid so that is his ty position and then we update the user interface and refreshing the browser window shows us some problems this is not how we want the score text to look like so let's fix it first of all in the create ui method we forgot to give the score text a scroll factor of zero that's why it was scrolling upwards and also we forgot to give it a correct depth value for the ui which is why it was hidden behind the bottom ui bar the second problem has its roots in the entity prefab file because apparently we forgot to save the tile coordinates of all the entities so every time we set an entity sprite position we also want to set its tile position for this we create this new method called set tile pos and here we can simply use the helper method that we've created a couple episodes earlier to convert any pixel position to the correct tile position on the level grid and then save these values as tx and ty and obviously every time we create a new entity we also need to save its tile position and see we already had the comment here to save the tile position we just forgot to add it so here just type set tile position and let's refresh the game one last time and now look everything is perfect we have the health hearts on the top and we have the player's distance on the bottom always updating every frame and updating accordingly to his distance i hope you enjoyed this episode even though there were so many bugs that we had to fix i apologize for that too many errors but sometimes that just happens when you start to tie things together in your user interface you see all the little things that you forgot along the way please give the video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for the next episodes and if you have questions leave them in the comments below and don't be shy to come on my discord and start asking questions there and very important please follow me on twitter i'm really trying to grow my twitter account thank you so much for watching have a great day and i'll see you in the next episode bye